So you want to learn how to create this insane trippy wipe transition for your next music video inside of After Effects? Well, I'm about to break down how I created this effect step by step inside of this tutorial. But real quick before we get into it, I'm Lurking Visuals and I run my own editing store where we sell all of the editing presets, assets and overlays that you need for your next music video that will help you speed up your workflow and level up your edits. If that's something you're interested in, check the first link in the description, but let's get right into it. So I'm in After Effects right now and I'll be breaking down how I create this transition and I got two clips right here from this new Defang music video. The first thing that I'll be doing is creating an adjustment layer. So to this adjustment layer, the first effect that I'll be adding on is a distort chroma. And this is a plugin from Sapphire. So you're going to need the Sapphire plugin if you want to create it like me. If not, you can just skip this effect and jump right into the next one. So the first thing that I'll be doing is turning up the blur lens to 300. And then I'll actually head all the way to the end right here, to the last frame of my scene. And I'll keep the amount at 1. And then I'll go like halfway through my clip because my clip is pretty short so it's like half a second right here and I'll turn it all the way down to zero and I'll also keyframe the rotate warp direction from zero then here at the end I'll turn it up to like let's do 47 and we'll do the end of the transition later so for right now we'll just do the beginning over here the next effect that I'll be adding on is a displacer pro effect this is also a plugin, but it's completely free, so I'll leave the download link in the description. You can go download it for yourself. Keyframing the translate X and the rotation, and then head all the way to the end over here. And then let's drag up the translate X to 67% and drag down the rotation to minus 40. And don't forget to head down to edge behavior and select mirror repeat. That way we get rid of those black parts. Next up, I'll be adding a brightness and contrast. This is not really necessary for the wipe transition, I just like the look of this and it really enhances most of my transitions. So I'll keyframe the brightness and the contrast and then here at the end I'll drag down the brightness to minus 24 and bump up the contrast to like 70. That way we'll get more visibility to that distort look over here. Next up I'll add a sapphire shake. Let's go here to the beginning and let's drag down the amplitude to zero and keyframe the amplitude and drag up the frequency to 12 and don't forget to turn on motion blur then head all the way to the end over here and let's turn up the amplitude to 2 but we will be messing a lot with the graph for this one and I'll actually do it right now so it just eases all of our keyframes and then for the sapphire shake all I'll do is just head to the value graph and I want to mainly affect the end over here so I'll drag this all the way here and this one down that way we will have a really subtle shake for the beginning part all the way until here where it will turn up at the end and that's kind of the look that i'm going for and for these other effects i'll basically do the same thing but not as much so i'll just drag this down a little bit so you can build up slowly and then here at the end it will turn up a lot and let's do the same for the direction too and the same for the displacer pro and the next effect that i'll be adding on is the one that will actually create that kind of wipe look so I'll add a scale wipe effect and I'll go to the beginning right here, keyframe the stretch and then go all the way to the end and let's drag off the stretch. And you can actually move the center so you can see where it's going. And I like to keep my wipe at the direction 50%. So it's headed up to the top right corner over there. But you can mess with the wipe, put it down if you'd like to. Mess with it, mess around with it, get something you like. But I often keep my wipe around 10 and that looks good and I'll just add two more effects just to spice it up a little bit because my clip is pretty dark it looks a bit boring right now so what I'll do is add on a deep glow and if you don't have deep glow you can use sapphire glow or whatever glow you have so I'll just do just like all of these effects I'll turn down the exposure over here and then go all the way to the end and let's turn it up and after I've added on the deep glow, all I'll do now is add on a chromatic aberration from Universe. If you don't have Universe, you can use the stock one. I'm not sure how good it is, but there is one available at least. And I'll put the Universe above the deep glow actually. And for the first frame right here, I'll turn down the master distortion to zero. And also head down to blur and turn down your edge blur and radial blur to zero. And let's keyframe all of that and then head to the end frame right here and turn up the master distortion to 
and the edge blur to 1 and radial blur to 3 or I'll actually turn down the master distortion to 1.5 and now as you can tell we have this wipe transition that is going on but I haven't messed with the graph for this one so all I gotta do is press U on my keyboard so I can see all of my keyframes and I'll ease these all of them and I haven't messed with the scale wipe graph so I'll open that one up and I'll do something like this just like the other ones make sure that it's pretty slow here at the beginning but then the real transition comes in at the last few frames so it'll be pretty intense here at the end and I'll actually mess with the center of it uh, I'll do like that and I'm pretty happy with that so now I'll turn on the motion blur for my adjustment layer when the next clip comes in I'll cut it over here because now we have to mess with almost all of these effects so that's why I do them separately so what I'll do now is press U on my keyboard and I'll move my keyframes all the way here so it's lined up with the new clip and then I'll move all of these keyframes all the way over here so they can reset once again when this part comes in I'll be easy easing all of my keyframes once again because we will have to mess with the graphs for every single one of them I'll be turning the distort chroma to minus one and the direction to minus 47 so I'll basically do everything in reverse and I'll do the displacer to pro to minus 67 and the rotation to plus 40 but for the scale wipe I'll be turning the stretch down to minus let's do minus 8 and I'll move it all the way here and I'll have to turn down the deep glow too because it's pretty bright right now so I just mess with the threshold a little bit and I'll turn up the radius so now it should look decent so now we have this all we gotta do now is just get rid of this black part and then mess with the graph for these effects now to get rid of these black parts down here all you gotta do is just pre-compose both of your layers and then let's move the anchor point up to the top right corner over here and then I'll keyframe the scale drag the keyframe back here and then head all the way to the last frame and I'll turn up the scale so we can't see that black part anymore and then I'll be easy using my keyframes turning on the motion blur and let's create a graph that looks something like this and I'll just go back and make sure that you don't have any of those black parts if you do like I do right here just mess with the graph till it's not in the frame anymore like that and I'll actually turn up the scale a little bit too let's do 149 and now it's not visible anymore and I'll be messing with the graph for this one so all I gotta do is just select my first one and then select the first effect and then just make a graph that looks something like this and then select the next effect and do something similar and I'll keep on going you know the drill I don't have to go through every single effect but essentially it will be the same thing for all of those and the scale wipe one also needs to be good because that's like the whole effect if you mess this graph up it will be it will basically ruin the whole effect so make sure to get this one good I'll do something like this for my scene and right now it looks like this which is pretty insane it actually looks great right now and all I gotta do is just like we did last time pre-compose both of these or I'll actually show another way that you can do this simply by adding a transform effect oh, and of course add it onto the adjustment layer and then all you gotta do is move your anchor point down to the top left corner right here then copy your anchor point values and paste it onto the position value now we'll have it re-centered once again let's keyframe the scale and press u on my keyboard so i can see all of my keyframes let's drag it out all the way to the end and here at the beginning i'll zoom in like this and now i'll be messing with the graph once again Use these your keyframes open up the graph editor and let's create something like this that one was a little bit too fast so i'll be dragging it out and i can actually drag out my keyframe too so it ends a little bit after all of these effects and that's pretty good so I'm happy with how it looks right now and that's basically the full transition and now that I'm giving all the sauce I'll actually be showing you guys a way to spice this effect up even more 
and I've been using this like since 2022 in all of my music videos. It's really one of my favorite effects. I don't even think I mentioned it, but this transition is actually from my ultimate VFX pack, which includes 55 of my favorite assets that I use in almost every single one of my music videos. And it's actually a full kit of everything that you need to edit a full music video, everything from some basic shakes to some trippy shakes to some basic transitions to these trippy transitions to rotoscope effects like i got everything in there this is the ultimate vfx kit so i got transitions crt effects backgrounds flickers night visions like basically everything inside of this pack now that i'm done yapping about that i'll open up my pre-comp and i'll actually copy this base layer and then i'll paste it on top and i'll actually rotoscope out my subject right now but only for these last couple of frames and I won't go through how to rotoscope him out you should already know how to do that and now that I've masked my subject out you can see that we still got him in frame for this transition so what I'll do is actually add a refined soft matte effect and I'll turn down the additional edge radius and turn up the feather a little bit that way our masking looks a lot smoother so now I'll actually simply just press S on my keyboard keyframe a scale and drag it back all the way here and then I'll press Y on my keyboard grab this anchor point and put it all the way up here to the top left corner you can do whatever corner you want to but i always do top left or top right and then i'll just simply scale him up till he's out of the frame and that way we'll have like a double transition so the background moves and then we also get our subject out of the frame like it basically just spices up the whole effect but don't spam this effect just use it when it fits the video because it won't always look good but i'll show you guys but I'll show you guys the technique and how it looks real quick. I think I just skipped it, but I keyframed my uh, scale to. Uh, but I keyframed my scale till he was out of the frame, and then eased my keyframes and made a graph that looks like this in the value graph, of course. And I'll actually drag it out a little bit more so he can be in the frame for a little bit longer. And that's cool, I'm happy with that. And you can actually add a camera lens blur to the last couple of frames over here. That way it will just look a little bit better because he's getting closer to the camera so he shouldn't be in focus. So turn it down to zero and then here at the end let's do like 20. And let's see how it looks for these last couple of frames. And that's good, maybe a little bit too much so do 15. And then you can do the exact same thing but for this next scene make sure to have your subject on top of the adjustment layer. And now you can tell he's in frame right here and he shouldn't be. So I'll be moving the anchor point up to the other corner, the opposite corner that you used last time. So I'll do top right this time, keyframe the scale, drag the scale keyframe all the way back. Let's turn up the scale till he is out of frame. Like this. And then easy as your keyframes, turn on the motion blur. And let's have him come back with a graph that looks something like this. That was maybe a little bit too fast, so I'll be dragging out my keyframe a little bit more and making my graph a little bit like this. And once again, I'll add a camera lens blur to make it look a little bit better when he comes in. So I'll turn it up to 17 for the first frame and then right here, basically back in place, it should turn down to zero. So I'll play everything through now and see what it looks like. And the effect is sick. I think it looks good. But that's pretty much it. Hope you guys learned a lot. And if you want more effects and transitions like these, you can go and check out the Ultimate VFX kit. I'll have it linked in the description. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next